If you find soft neon colors beautiful and nostalgic, you are probably a fan of Vaporwave or Outrun. And today I will show you a step-by-step -step process of creating a painting in this 1980s inspired style. Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome to my studio. As always, you can watch and relax or get your paint brushes and paper ready and follow along. To create a nice sharp border around your artwork when it's finished, we can use masking tape and apply it like this around the edges. Next we need to create a sketch on paper. You want to use really soft lines to help us create guidelines for our painting. If you don't want to hand draw, you can always transfer your image. I have a video on my Patreon page where I demonstrate the easiest way to transfer images without any special equipment. You may find lots of other relaxing and in-depth videos as well as monthly giveaways and other interesting things on Patreon. So feel free to go and check it out. For the really smooth and sharp circular shape, you can use a compass or just trace a perfectly round object like a lid or a plate. Next, we will need some paint. I'm starting off with watercolor, but you might as well use acrylics or gouache, whatever you have handy. Make sure you choose suitable colors before you start painting. You can even test them out to see if you are happy with your choices. For our next step, you want to use a large brush. If you don't have a large brush that holds water well, you can always resort to using a sponge or even a piece of clean cloth. Soak up as much water as you can with your chosen tool and then just apply clean, plain water over your paper. I'm using watercolor, so I'm just going to apply water to my paint and apply that onto paper. You can always do the same thing with acrylic or gouache by squirting a little bit onto your palette and diluting it with water. Now my main colors for the background are open rosa, which is the pink color here, the quinacridone purple which is this color here, and cobalt teal, which is this color here. Now let's have a look at our paper. It is still damp, but you don't see any pools of water on it anymore. And this is the kind of a texture that we want because we will be applying a very, very diluted wet paint, applying from the top to bottom. Make sure that you work with paint only while it's wet. As soon as it starts to set, you need to leave it alone. Otherwise, you will create a lot of streaks. Now I'm moving into my purple. I'm going to also add a little bit more pink just to create a really soft transition. Dampening the paper before we're starting to apply these washes gives us just a little extra time for this blending and seamless transitions. When making a transition, you want to bring your previous color a little bit lower than what you, where you want it to be to allow for a very smooth color change. So here I am already going into the blue, but see here I'm just mixing it in a little bit with that previous color. Make sure to come up right to the edge so that you get a really nice crisp border when we remove the masking tape at the end of the painting. And now it has to completely dry. Now, one of the common symbols of a Vaporwave and Outrun are these round planet slash sun shapes. Interesting fact, depending on the position of the lines, it can represent different things. Thin lines at the top and thicker on the bottom in some cases represent the reflection of the setting sun over the water or heat distortion, whereas the reverse effect of thick lines 
at the top and thin on the bottom represent the clouds and the smog over the horizon. And I guess that's the beauty of stylization. It carries the information through simplified and flattened forms and shapes. It is important to do this next step only after your painting is 100% dry. Once the water is absorbed and there is no sheen to your paper, you can finish drying it off by using a hair dryer. If you put your hand under your paper and you can still feel that it seems damp or cold, it means that your painting is actually not fully dry. Once it feels nice and dry on the other side of the painting, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. Now remember that pencil line that we did to represent the sun. Because we use the reasonably transparent paint, that line should still be a little bit visible. If it's not visible at all, you can always redraw it, but in my case, I can still see a little bit of it through. We're going to use masking tape to isolate some of these lines. Now I have a variety of different masking tape thicknesses. You can also layer two or three together to create a wider space. Because the theme of my painting is sort of a, that tropical kind of a palm look, I'm going to go with the larger lines at the bottom to represent more of the sea reflected look. So now I have lines that are going from thinner to wider. Next, I'm going to use white paint to create a suitable color for the sun. I'm using acrylics, but you can feel free to use gouache or watercolor white, although acrylic probably will be the most opaque color, so it will give you the best coverage. Now you want to mix up a lot of really light colored paint. You can use completely different colors. It is entirely up to you. I'm also going to make a merger uh, of one color going into another one. So remember that line that we were talking about? So now that line will be a perfect guide for you to create that really, really lovely sharp circle. Take your time, don't rush, and use appropriate brush for the kind of material that you are using. If you're using watercolor, you use watercolor brushes. It will really help you. And of course, for acrylic, you want to use uh, synthetic uh, acrylic style brushes. Now, because I want this to be quite a light sort of a colored thing, I'm choosing really light colors. If you are more into the outrun sort of a style, you can use darker, deeper colors, including blacks and so on. When trying to create uh, quite an opaque sort of a style, uh, paint application, remember you might need to go over with a couple of layers. So when mixing paint, keep that in mind. Now I'll add a little bit more white to the color that I was using before and I'm just creating a lighter tone going upwards on the sun. Just ever so slightly. You don't want to change tones very rapidly because then your sky will, I mean your sun will look super stripy. You want that transition quite gradual. You will notice that as your paint dries it becomes a little bit patchy and the reason for that is that whenever paint dries, especially if you're working with acrylics, it will become a little bit darker and duller in shade, so not as vibrant. But if you're working with watercolor, watercolor tends to become a little bit light in color as it dries. So never judge your paint application until your paint is completely dry. Now, because Outrun has so many really, really soft colors, I would like to use quite a few different shades within this one painting. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to just add a little bit of that brightness on the top of the sun. Next I'm going to start adding a little bit of that purple color that we used on the background to the mix that I've used before, you know the blue mix, and I'm going to continue working on the 
sun or in my opinion i think it's like a foreign planet just because it looks too cool to be our normal regular sun just like previously you want to create that transition very softly and you want to gradually build up to the desired color the soft transition is the key in this technique so if you need to go back and create another layer or create a softer transition make it a little bit longer definitely go for it and now we can start adding a little bit of that pink to the purple to turn it a little bit more pinkier as we go down the bottom and now going into the pinks before you remove the masking tape you can create a little bit of contrast with the background by using a little bit of white it's not necessarily an outline but just a color that looks just a slightly brighter you don't have to do that though it's very optional you can do the same thing with a darker color if you'd like here are some few last strokes and after this we would need to leave this painting to dry just like we did before you can use a hair dryer again or just leave it somewhere nice dry and warm and the ear will do its job hmm, just looking at this whole composition i actually quite like that lighter effect rather than darker effect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to still mix same hues but with a little bit more of the white uh, to create these really really nice tinted colors like I did here still using the same colors on the palette just a little bit lighter th than I did previously here and just really softly and really lightly and quickly gonna go over with the brush okay so I've made this bottom area just a little bit lighter than before still using the same shade so if it was pink it is still pink just with a bit more white and i think i'm liking this much more i've actually decided to go ahead and create a little bit of that lightness that i've created on the edges of the circle within the lines themselves i just really like that almost glowing effect that it creates You do need to make sure that everything is 100% dry before you do this. As you can see, you need to place your hand firmly on your artwork and use a brush with a thin, nice tip. Load it up with reasonably diluted white paint and go for it. Again, you don't have to do that. If you, if you may be going for outrun by using darker colors, things will stand out on their own naturally okay now this is done and i actually really like that glowing effect now it's time to get into the next thing you don't have to do this but i quite like to do that because um, mountains are also quite a feature in both vaporwave and outrun the only thing is in an outrun you get them with sort of a black background lots of these lines and things like that you know the influence of the game and then with the vapor wave you get really soft very white mountains you know with the influence of japanese art if you want to you can always create a little bit of the outline for yourself just be really really careful because you don't want to go too strong as we will be creating a really light almost invisible or very faint sort of a look very soft and very milky and as i said it's 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 going to be uh, like a little secret feature of the artwork uh what i mean by secret feature is that you know there are usually a few strong points in any artwork things that really jump at you the stronger colors the brighter colors 
contrasty edges and so on and then there are a few things that as you keep looking at the artwork become apparent now these are usually really cool and usually viewers find it really fun to find something out going hey i've been looking at this for three minutes and i have just realized that there's this little thing hiding in the corner it's this secret feature look is the thing that we're kind of going for with these mountains the mountains can also be quite stylized just as long as they are really soft and almost disappearing into the background of this sun or planet or whatever you want us to be. So now while the mountains are drying we can go into sketching the palm trees. Another really common feature with vaporwave and outrun as well. So to make it easier for us, what we need to do is we need to just create a very, very quick little sketch. You don't want to get into the details, you just want to create pretty much lines. Just like we did with the sun, we just did one line, that was enough. We can do the same thing with the trees. So here I would like to put two trees, the taller one and the shorter one. Also, we can place main veins for the leaves as well. And same with this little palm. We'd we'll be able to add more things later on if we feel like it. So the next step is to mix up the color for the trees. If again you are more of a fan of the outrun, you can use black. I'm going for more of a vapor wavy kind of a color scheme i'm gonna go and i'm going to mix up a really soft grayish green sort of a shade and use that to paint the trees so as you can see here i'm mixing all of the colors that we've used the pink the yellow and the blue with a little bit of white so i'm going to use a smaller brush this one here to start working on the leaves so again i'm going to work from the top to the bottom you can start from the bottom to the top especially if you can turn your paper around quite easily i'm going to do this just because i'm filming so it's a little bit easier to go top to bottom so first thing that you want to do is you want to go over these veins that we've created for the leaves because these are the main branches of our palm tree. They don't have to be perfect, they're just there so you can see them. Next, you can start building up the leaves of these veins. You can always simplify and stylize the leaves even more if you don't want to go through every single little leaf. You can always add extra little branches and things as you go along and see if you need to add more. When painting leaves, make sure that your strokes are nice and quick. It creates the most realistic feel of those kind of palm trees. When painting these kind of palm trees, you want to make sure that the density of the leafage um, is much more intense, closer to the center because, you know, you get leaves growing in different direction and so on. But as you go out like this, you'd be able to see the light shining through different leaves and separate branches. And as I said, you can always add more if you feel that there are gaps or that you want to create balance or vice versa, set something a little bit off balance. There, so now I'm going to do the same thing with this tree as well. by the way to get the right consistency of paint because as you can tell i'm using acrylic you need to add a little bit of water it doesn't need to be super runny and transparent but it, you do want it to be almost like sort of a creamy texture rather than a thick lumpy one
Okay, so now that we have finished the greenery of the palm trees, let's go and create the tree bark. Now, you can go for a very smooth looking sort of a bark, or you can go and create a really thick, very lumpy kind. Um, whichever you go for, you can use the same color as we used for the leaves to create more of that sort of a printed stylized look. Or you can go in and create a dark or a lighter shade. Um, you can even go from one and just slowly uh, move into the other, you know, like we did on the sun. Okay, so if you are planning to create a smooth line, you can go just like this with your paintbrush and create a leg for your palm tree to stand on. Now, as always, you want this to be a bit thinner at the top and wider as it goes down. If you do want to create texture, which I think I probably will not because I have so many clean lines, I think it will work really well, nice and straight. You can always just go and sort of do like a, like a lumpy kind of a edge. And same thing for the other palm tree. And remember there's nothing wrong with changing uh, your mind or direction of things as they're going. As you can see I have changed my mind on the color of the sky and this, uh, of the sun and decided to make it lighter. Uh, same thing here as you can see I'm actually painting the line and it's not really falling along with the pencil line and this that is absolutely fine it's part of the creative process if you are a beginner and you're just learning how to do these things then perhaps sticking with the lines uh, will be a little bit easier and a little bit more sort of a comfortable uh, but if you have drawn something and then you feel like this is not the best then please don't feel that you have to go along with it anyway just go with what your creativity is whispering in your ear okay so here we go our painting is almost finished but I do want to put a couple of more details it just seems very very still so what I want to do is I want to get some white and I'm going to put few little birds but in white to correspond with the actual sun now I guess you can say this is more of the Japanese influence you know the little white birds and let's put one darker one uh, just against the sun just to make it positive negative effect you know where you get the shadow versus the actual object okay and now all we need to do is remove the masking tape um, if you have been hearing some sounds on the background um, guys I have had this really crazy weather going on so I hope you don't mind that Okay, so here it is. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this tutorial. Uh, please let me know how you go. Send me photos of your artworks. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And I want to say a big, big thank you to my wonderful, wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel and hanging out with me on Patreon. So you guys, I hope you have a lovely day and thank you so much for painting with me. Make sure to check out the videos that are coming up on your screen now. Bye bye!